morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here today to the Blue Earth County Board of Commissioners. Today is August 7, 2018, and I'd like to call the meeting to order, and then we can stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> so, Bob and board, is there anything on the agenda that we need to add or change? <laughs> Well, Mr. Chair, I just note that uh, our first item there with the veteran service officer, um, <clears throat> Mr. <clears throat> excuse me, McLaughlin has been called to a uh, hearing that Representative Walls has called on veterans' health care, and so I'll be covering that item. Oh, okay. Then. I'll move the agenda. Second. Changes. Yep. We have a motion for approval and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. So our first item of business here then is our Veterans Service Office Operational Enhancement Grant. Yes, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, this is a, an annual grant that the Veterans Service Office uh, is eligible to receive. <clears throat> the amount is limited uh, for our county to $12,500 annually, and it is an operational grant that is designed to assist uh, the department to um, get materials and supplies and uh, equipment sorts of things are the primary focus that we've utilized uh, those dollars for to help um, the VSOs in their work with veterans in our community. And so you'll see that uh, there's a budget page. Uh, let me get to it here quickly. Page. Uh well, it depends which page you look at, 12 or 10. <laughs> um, it's actually page 14, 14. in the packet. Yeah, okay, yeah, that one. Shows that uh, we're using $500 for administration, which includes office supplies and uh, things of that nature, and then $10,400 for operations, which includes um, some training activities that the VSO um, will be participating in as well as some uh, media recruitment sorts of or advertising uh, functions that will support the department and then sixteen hundred dollars will be for um, getting second opinions on um, veterans uh, medical exams and so uh, that is the planned use of those funds and so we're asking the board support for making an application for that grant Okay, Chair. What would the board like to do? Yes. I'll move to approve. Second. Okay, we've got a motion from Commissioner Stuerberg and a second from Commissioner People for approval of this enhancement grant for our VSO. And uh, thanks for giving us a, a little synopsis there. And I had a good talk with Bob yesterday at our monthly meeting. And it um, sounds like it's very helpful for the, uh, a lot of the veterans in the community in this region, actually. Any discussion? Or? I'm uh, really, really satisfied and happy with the Mike that he took the time to put this together. We we did miss the, this for a couple of years, and uh, this is what you see the billboards and stuff on mm -hmm. along the road and helps veterans get in contact with their um, VSO. I mean, they know how to do it. Um, it also helps, uh, like I said, transportation helps with uh, maybe buying a a laptop computer mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. actually saves the county money by by doing stuff like that but it's a, it's a, another bonus for Mike uh, he's uh, he's always looking forward and and trying to help the veterans across the county and uh, I think it's really positive <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Anybody else? No? I know I mentioned to Bob too I'm sure that it'll be really wonderful actually for the vets and, and for the staff but when we have our new space provided for them where they can actually have a waiting room yep. right now there really isn't anything like that and it's very tight quarters that they function within and seems they make do but uh, just for privacy and for the ease of the services that they provide it'll be nice to have that 
available for them <coughs> within a year and a half or so. so. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Next on our business this morning, we've got our Public Works Director and County Engineer. We invite Ryan Tilgis to morning, the Ryan. table. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning. Yeah, morning. <laughs> How are you? Good yourselves? Good. Good. I understand it's been kind of busy. Yeah. Be the nature of the beast, though. So. <laughs> uh, Fortunately, we don't have any action items. It's kind of odd how our workflow ebbs and flows as far as when some of those grant agreements and things mm -hmm. like that come in and require approval. But we, nonetheless, without those, we've still been very busy. Uh, the first information item on the agenda, uh, I provided you with a copy of the National Bridge Inspection Standards Compliance Review that was performed annually for agencies that are required to perform safety inspections on our uh, county and <coughs> city and township bridges. And you'll see our uh, overall 99.9% .9 compliance rating That's was great. based on eight separate metrics that were detailed in the letter. So I wanted to provide that for your information just to detail the great job that our staff does and really appreciate the efforts of Larry and Mike and Nick and Stefan and the rest of our staff that work on those items. They do a great job. Wonderful. <clears throat> uh, and then aside from that we have some updates on our construction projects. CASA 1 the old Minnesota Highway 66 reconstruction project. The work is underway from CASA 90 to Mankato, uh, and that project also includes the south surcharge areas. Um, grading work is underway at the pond and the garden site, mm. so that's been uh, drastically yeah. altered if you haven't uh, snuck out there yet. Oh, yeah. Tree removal <laughs> has been completed, and they brought in quite a bit of fill from the project mm. to bring the grade up. Uh, it, it looks like a war zone right now, but it's yeah. starting to come together. You're starting to see the pond form. They're putting in some of the drainage features over the next few weeks. So I thought the pond might be larger than what it looks like. It look, it's not as big as I thought it would right. be. And I think as the fill comes up and then they'll excavate some more of it out. Oh, they might set the actual contours, but it, the, a lot of that site's being brought up. Oh, okay. Um, it didn't look as work. large. I was out there two weeks ago, you know, hiking around the whole area. Oh, yeah, and it's changed quite a bit since then even. Has it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. of course, I still got some shoes with clay and mud, I can't get off of them, but uh, it takes some work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're sure uh, you're not authorized down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we should, I think we should have called the county sheriff to see yeah. him. I think the commissioners <laughs> can inspect anything they want. I've been <laughs> down there. <laughs> I, <don't want> <laughs> I should have called you, though, because I know it's in there. It's, uh, yeah, I can. I want, I <laughs> let, let me know if you'd like to go out there, and I can give you a guided escort with a safety vest for your own yeah. safety as well. Uh, okay. It's so, pretty good when there's when it's not that. under construction that uh, yeah, workers quiet. are there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're <coughs> hopeful to have the Red Jacket Trail reopened on a temporary alignment with gravel surfacing by the end of the month. That's amazing. Um, you know, obviously that site where, where the trail is being relocated. We'll put it on a part of its uh, proposed future alignment, then part will be on a temporary connection just to facilitate the construction staging. Again, it would only be a gravel surface, but it would get really open to the public. Okay. We have been in contact with the folks from the River Ramble and the folks from the Mankato Marathon. I'm always hesitant to give them a, a, an official date because mm -hmm. construction and Mother Nature sometimes change plans for us. So we're working to try to get that reopened so that they can have their events uh, on the trail alignment and keep them off of the roads if at all possible yeah. for the pieces that they're looking to utilize. Just a quick comment too that you and I connected on, I know, wondering if, if, if uh, our information staff or whoever helps update things, if they could get that new date maybe up on our website. I you know? hesitate to give it until I know that it's... Oh, because they had a date already closer. on there for like... Yeah, we, we, we updated earlier. the um, press release to provide the public with an idea because I think it was expiring the period that we had said the closure period would be yeah. for, yeah. so we updated that for another three to four weeks. It oh. should get us to the point where we know Good. a little bit closer yeah. that it's going to actually be completed. I hate to provide a date so far out and then be wrong. and Because right. the previous um, day it was like... Next uh, week or something, it was going to be. Yeah, we we'll provide an update on that uh, okay. via press release. That's helpful. Yep. Uh, the work on RSS2, which is in the area of the Kovarovsky tree farm, is underway. They've excavated and constructed a temporary access road that will take all of those residents of Indian Creek Road to the south uh, so they can get them in and out <coughs> and begin excavating the hillside there to construct the rest of the RSSs uh, 2 and 3 that will connect to the south city limits of Mankato. They are underway with some of the reinforced soil slope walls, placing layers of geogrid and then either rock or sand. So that's an interesting process to watch. We were out there last week 
watching some of those layers go in and it seemed to be going well. We've had our geotechnical consultants out to review the contractor's operations, make sure it's in accordance with their expectations. And all in all, it seems to be going well. It's probably a slow start, but until you get a larger footprint to yeah. work on it, it's going to be a little bit slower going. Do we, do we have all the fill identified for, um, we're going to need more fill out there, quite, quite a bit I would assume. A lot of, those walls are all granular material, so the yeah. contractor does have a borrow pit. Okay. For that. It'll take a lot to learn. I mean, yep. take, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know where the cubic yards are, but it's got to be huge. Absolutely. Uh, so that's Casa 1. Um, the uh, surcharge area 2, where we had encountered uh, a very large number of bone fragments and, and some pieces, that report is being wrapped up. It should be done this week and it would be submitted to the Army Corps of Engineers. So after that's submitted, then we'll have a little bit better idea of time frame and what the expectations are after the Corps' uh, archaeologists have had an opportunity to review the report. So really until the report's completed and submitted and they've had time to digest it, I can't give a, a real positive confirmation as far as what type of sure. delay we're going to encounter, but mm. we'll keep you in the loop as soon as I find anything out. Um, very frustrating, but um, I guess that's the, yeah. you know, the cultural resources aspects of it. If they found that it was overly significant, Ryan, do you, would they actually not allow the, the they, alignment? Uh, we may have to look at uh, mit different mitigation measures going to a phase three archaeological survey that would be a fairly comprehensive site dig um, and excavating any remnants. We're hopeful that if we are just covering the top with the fabric and the surcharge material that that limited disturbance, we can maybe make some design modifications to the drainage to avoid that site. Mm -hmm. So and again, until we get the report, we really don't know. <coughs> yeah, I'm, okay. I'm guesstimating. Are there local archaeological outfits that will do that? Or uh, the company that we've know? hired, the 106 group, or that uh, our consultant SRF has had included in their proposal for the work, are out of the metro area. Yeah. I don't believe there's any used local to in here Ankato that I'm aware of. We used to have one in Ankato. I knew that. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I've not crossed paths. Well, with they're any. they're not. Yeah, they're. They're not in existence now, so I okay. didn't know if there's someone else around. Yeah, uh, you know, and then they've got to come up with the significance. What they believe is that the site was a, a butchering processing site that Native Americans may, may have used, so it was not necessarily their, and this is the 106 groups, I uh, guess. They, they don't think that was a habitation site, so I'm, hmm. I'm hopeful that the significance of it is hmm. considerably less if we're talking about a site where you know, they just dumped carcasses with effectively a dump. Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. carcasses that they had, they had processed on so time will tell. Mm -hmm. But very frustrating mm -hmm. on our part to be delayed that significantly. And, um, moving on to Casa 14 from 4 to 10, our project from last year, all that work has been completed and it's been open to traffic. So we're glad to have that one checked off the books. Casa 12, Stage 5, work is completed from Minnesota Highway 83 to Carver mm -hmm. Road. That's been open to traffic for a while now. Mm -hmm. People are using very it and nice. enjoying it. The only work that's remaining is uh, the aggregate base and the paving of the trail segment that goes along that piece, but that can be done at a later date with the remnant of the trail. And I've got, go oh, ahead. Just a comment. I, well, the fun of it was following some of the trucks because I, I, I literally saw, I think, every 120 seconds a truck. <laughs> I'm not kidding. 120 mm -hmm. seconds for how many weeks now? Um, going out to 12 from the River Valley. Right, Jack Valley Park, yes. Yep. I mean, I don't know where the site is exactly. I remember I went, I, went, I did find it. It's out on, uh, it's out by the Maple River or something out there. I don't, they're digging um, aggregate and hauling it up to 12. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like 120 seconds. I think there's a truck driving. Yep. It goes up, goes down stadium, takes a right at Quick Trip, I believe. You know, goes down. I mean, I followed their route. It's amazing how yep. many, how many drive, and you can tell it's many different. Trucking co contractors. Contractors. Are, yep. every, there's tons of trucks that look completely different from one another. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's good to see that progress finally. We're very happy mm -hmm. to uh, yeah. see it underway. They're hauling the Class 3 aggregate base, which is the bottom lift, and now they're capping it with the Class 5. They've got the majority of the under drain in so that as it rains now, that water will be carried away into the drainage system. So we're getting to the point where we should be a little bit better uh, weatherproof as far as being able to construct the road items. The curbs probably. <coughs> 10 to 14 days out from uh, them starting that work and then the paving would be falling shortly mm -hmm. thereafter the, the, all the concrete is able to cure. So there is a, is a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel here, fortunately. Yeah. Um, 
it's starting to shape up. They did get all the final grading and turf establishment installed on Minnesota Highway 83 at that intersection. They did get a dry period, get in there and get that completed. So we'd still have to get in and put up the final lot. Uh, Street lights because we had to install temporary ones, as you may recall, and put the final striping in. But we'll wait until the detour for the 22 and 90 roundabout is off of that, so we get some of the traffic taken away, so we can close that. But it's progressing well, and um, I don't know that we're going to make our August 15th completion date. <laughs> but with a, as late of a start as was had, and some of the weather delays, it's not surprising either. We're still continuing to hold the contractor's feet to the fire as far as progressing with their work and we're starting to see it all come together which is yeah it's reassuring uh, speaking of the 90 and 22 roundabout that work is also progressing very well under MnDOT's concrete uh, uh, MnDOT's project uh, I received photos last week the concrete pavement work was done at the roundabout as well wow. as the curb and gutter yeah. so uh, need to get back out there this week and see how it's looking but they're, they're coming right along they're moving. and they've got some other uh, obviously paving work that's taking place concurrently with that project but it, Seems to be going well. 109 yeah. paving, the work is completed. And Brian, is, you have a, oh, you have an estimation for an open on that one? I, I mean, it was a pavement down. Head, I can check okay. and get back to you though. Because uh, I was thinking it was a late, you know, late fall project. Yeah. I was thinking, uh, in, in just spitballing, be... I'm thinking it was um, end of August or early yeah, September, that's awesome. mid-September. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. That rolled, yeah, it'd be nice to get Because it was closed in June, typically, you know, that two to three month construction period. Ribbon cutting is what we do. For 90 and 22. Yeah, uh, I haven't had that discussion yet. I guess that's uh, a <laughs> MnDOT's lead lead project. Yeah. So yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. Would you like might, to have a ribbon cutting? Well, they might have some kind of a thing and notify us if they have something. Yeah, oh, absolutely, nice. sure. I didn't know if you want me to initiate that or not. It or impacts or, a lot of people. Oh, it'll be a great uh, safety enhancement to mm -hmm. get that yeah. uh, roundabout installed. Oh my gosh! So we're very happy to see that in progress. 109, the paving contract, that work has been completed. That road's open to traffic as well. Another good project to have under the notch in the belt and completed. So Looks nice. Thank you. Yeah, right. Turned out I'm very sure, nice. I'm sure <coughs> the uh, farmers coming in this fall with all the corn and stuff to the uh, ethanol plant is going to really be nice yep. you know, coming back up and down that road. Yeah, so I good. certainly think waiting the year, letting that... Uh, grading segment settle out and putting the pavement on the subsequent year was a good measure too as far as the long-term durability of the road so the 2018 bituminous overlay contract work has been completed um, i think we're all aware of the uh, faux pas misspelling that took place on 33 that was corrected uh, the contractor was given a demerit <laughs> verbally but <laughs> You can't make it up. You just you can't. Was there an explanation provided, or the guy zoned out, whatever? He was literally zoned out. How do you spell that? that? <laughs> <laughs> nope, there wasn't. A, you can't. Like I said, you can't make it up. And, and we did go out and cover it up as soon as I found out about it. I sent staff out um, to get it covered because you know they always say, well, we'll be back Monday to fix it, and then maybe three Mondays from then. So I didn't want it sitting out there. Sure. Um, how do you cover something like that? What do you we use some black traffic marking paint, oh, okay. just covered for the time being, and then they put a. Uh, they were out in the areas too, so they put a quick uh, dura patch over the top of it just to provide some oh. adhesion because those messages are a little uh, yeah. slippery. Yeah, especially yeah. when put a coat of paint over them. Was that a Friday, and then they they did that? I think on a Friday. It was a Saturday. Oh, they did it. They were Saturday? working on a Saturday. Uh, well, you found out on Saturday. Then, uh, Sunday, I think. Well, I found out Saturday. Sunday morning during church. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking around Geysers in Yellowstone Park, I think, when I got, and I was actually surprised that I got a, a text message. He actually came through a few of those sites where I actually had cell reception. I should have tried to send it to you. I had a Saturday night. <laughs> late Saturday. Late Saturday. Uh, we're Pleasant Mountain. Township bridge replacement work is completed and it's open to traffic, so that was a nice little project to get done for the township. River Park Drive, Johnson property, the hazard, Homeland Security Emergency Management Hazard Mitigation Project. That was uh, demolished and the site restoration is near completion, <coughs> so that one's wow. done as well. So we've got a, our third one off of the river. That's amazing. Um, and then the Highway Safety Improvement Program projects on a lot of different county roads. I think I've got them all listed out for you there. That work began yesterday, so oh, nice. Good. Yep, things are humming right along in our construction department, and we're actually now kind of looking at you know if we get some bridge funding or things like that, can we get a couple box culverts or bridges done this fall yet in addition, and uh, trying to get the County Road 14 project that I'll get into here under the H SIP project. 
Um, what are just can you just tell us just for informational reasons? Yep. You know, what are some of the things that so are going to happen? That's the federal um, federal <laughs> grant that we get for safety enhancements. Mm -hmm. So that's a combination of uh, milled rumble strips, okay. uh, shoulder paving, uh, signage for chevrons for curves, pavement message uh, stop ahead paints. Hopefully stop ahead. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, six inch uh, solid line painting for the longitudinal lines on the road and 24 inch uh, stop bar paint. Cool. So it's uh, low cost um, and it's really a risk based assessment as you'll learn when we go into our uh, safety plan updates, but it's a risk based assessment not we've had a crash at this intersection now we do something at this intersection it's looking at really statistically where's your highest likelihood of a crash and treating those with uh, higher effectiveness, lower cost implementations mm -hmm. can be used more on a county-wide basis or at those higher risk areas. But it's your department that helps identify all those things using certain standards, isn't it? Right. right. We have the safety plan and that's a tool, but we try to identify as a corridor. I don't want to go in and do chevrons all over the place. We want to kind of find a road that needs chevron, needs paint, needs rumbles. Try to do it as more of a corridor type of approach on some of those heavier traffic volume roads, certainly. Uh, we've got quite a few projects also in planning. County Road 1 from 9 to 90. Uh, this will include the uh, soil nail walls and reconstruction. Plans are, are effectively ready for submittal to the state. We're just wanting to wrap up some of the right-of-way negotiations because we run into the minor changes that the landowners want to see made. And if we can incorporate those into the plans before they're approved, it's you know a good measure. Typically, the approval period is not that long at the local MnDOT office for the state aid approvals. So. We're in pretty good shape there. We're again still working on some of the permitting and right of way acquisition. What about some of those? Was there a few areas where the retaining walls are actually going to go in? Isn't there a few areas? Uh, yep, there'll be the soil nail retaining walls and then the large block retaining the walls. The large block one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we've got, I believe, three of those out there. Three of different them. areas. So and those are the right of way acquisition areas and things of that nature. And then you were going to try to do something with them, so I thought that they kind of looked more. I don't know. Be beautiful. Or the the texture of the block should be similar to like a quarried limestone okay. texture. It will. Okay. And we're going to have an architectural uh, surface finish on the uh, soil nail wall, so they'll they'll shoot the anchors into the drill the anchors into the uh, side slope, and they'll put up reinforcing steel. And they'll shoot the shot creed on the face that ties it all together. But then there'll actually be a concrete panel that'll be attached to the face as a fascia piece because we don't want just a shot creek face, you know, really not <coughs> that aesthetically pleasing for that corridor. So what will that look like, you know? That'd be, the, the thought right now would be a quarried limestone, oh. similar to the red jacket trestle oh, or wonder. other things in that corridor. Well, that's what, it's good to highlight those things. Yep, absolutely. Need, that was my argument when we started doing that with the state was that, you know, we're not going to, if we're going to be forced to put these walls up, they're going to be aesthetically pleasing to the public because it's a, and, and obviously in accordance with the, scenic byway yeah, yeah. designation that we received on the north piece. Very nice. Uh, 14 from Minnesota 30 to 4, the plans have been completed. Jack's working diligently on right-of-way acquisition. That's starting to come together. Permits are submitted, so once we get permits and enough of the right-of-way to feel comfortable with proceeding, we'd like to get that out this fall yet to get some of the tile crossings completed mm -hmm. and then wrap up the grading and pavement rehabilitation work next year. But we'll uh, continue to see how that goes, I guess, as far as uh, those two critical steps. Uh, and then Casa 10 from the Blue Earth River to Casa 1, uh, just east of Vernon Center, right in Will's backyard. Yep. We have the public open house meeting tonight at our our yeah. facility from yeah. 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Yeah, I had brought that along just to highlight that yep. just in case we forgot it. Yeah. Uh, so we're hopeful to get some good public feedback as we move towards finalizing our design, buying right away, things like that for a 2019 project. Uh, 17 from Hafner Drive, uh, the Hafner Drive roundabout. The design consultant proposals were requested. Uh, we received three separate proposals from uh, Stonebrook Engineering, uh, SRF, and Bolton Mink. And we selected Bolton Mink based mm. on uh, cost as well as quality of proposal and Good. submittal. So we're excited to move forward with that project. So they'll be our design consultant for the contract. Um, we're actually having a kickoff meeting next week to begin the design. So we're, we're eager to get that constructed. And uh, one, whenever, whenever you get something done with, uh, you know, do a public 
make sure you let us know. Right Absolutely. Away. I mean, that'll, that's one of the biggest intersections I hear about. Mm -hmm. We had, um, in the proposal, anticipated uh, at least two public open house meetings or maybe one business, one public, depending on how the phasing goes, and they had included some time in their proposal to handle that. And I actually uh, did talk with Amy as well about uh, doing a little bit of a coordinated uh, mm -hmm. public information campaign for it as well. Interesting now that the city is doing Hafner and Adams, how much more interest in Hafner and 17 has come up because I'm starting to get phone calls. You know, what's that going to be done? And what's, what are you doing there? Yep. So I think we're in good position. Um, uh, a mixed blessing and a, and a good and a bad tied together, I guess I should say. Uh, the Highway Safety Improvement Program funds that I was um, cautiously optimistic for, they fell through. Um, mm. We were trying to get about a half a million dollars, but we never put in a solicitation for them, and it has to go through, typically it has to go through a vetting process. Uh, so it made it all the way up to MnDOT central office folks that are responsible for administering those funds, and they saw the request from the local district office and from the county and did deny it because we hadn't gone through their process. And I do understand they have uh, oversight at a federal level on how they administer those funds, and they could be um, significantly questioned for going out of their process. Um, so. It's, it's bad in the regard that we're not uh, eligible for those funds. It's good in the regard because if we had received those funds, it could have made it very, very challenging to deliver that project on the time frame that we have. Mm -hmm. sure. um, with all the extra hoops you have to jump Great. through at a federal level. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, and I know they're going to take into consideration all the new opening with the new Adam Street being opened up. And I've already used that road, and, I, oh, and that's, just, that's a huge piece. but. I've been getting comments too more on the Hafner Drive one was why do we have to do that with Adams being opened? You know, that's gonna be it's gonna alleviate yeah. some pressure off of there. So that that discussion that, that discussion is still out there too. So I just you know, I'm oh. sure they'll 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 study all the because this is a study or is this design? This is the design. Design, okay. This is not um, I didn't have anything in the scope for them to do another traffic study. Okay. So this would be moving design forward for construction. Okay. Um, I think, know. you know, when we talk about it a lot, I think up front we'll see some of the traffic mm -hmm. go away from the intersection, but as all of that area develops, we're going to see it go back yep. or beyond where it's at now. So mm -hmm. something will still need to be done with the intersection. Now, what yep. that appropriate measure is has been debated. Um, so, no, this is still with the intention to move forward for construction. Yep. And we've had this conversation. So. Yep. Yep. And mm. it's something, as anybody that drives at an intersection knows that I drive it a lot, that is such a dangerous intersection. Absolutely. It's probably the most dangerous intersection I've, you know, we've been blessed that nobody's been killed. Yep. yep. I, I can't I understand why that one doesn't work so well, but you got the same intersection on Star Street, down by Jerry's. It's, it's basically the same intersection. Yep. You got yeah. two lanes coming to Madison Avenue, mm. four lanes. Just mm -hmm. not the amount of traffic. Yeah, whether well, and oh, whether I think the, the traffic is I think the destinations are different. There isn't yeah. as much traffic speed. that needs to well, because it's speed, down to yeah, maybe a slightly less. Uh, I think more it's congested. more a product that you don't have as many north-south crossing movements as you do at Hafner. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think on Hafner you have a lot of people making either the left out or the through motion. Okay. Whereas there, I think the majority of them are making the Not movements busy, on okay. Madison. But yeah, every time I drive that, I'm thinking right. the traffic volume right. configuration, yeah. configuration is very similar. It's right. the same configuration, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's but it's the volume. That would explain that the north-south traffic isn't as busy. I'm always I, laughing at people that are coming out there trying to take a left-hand turn on Madison Avenue. Right. Right. It takes forever. Go, takes go down forever. a block and get to the stoplight yep. one yep. or another. Yep. Uh, so saying. we're excited to put that into motion and, and get it into our program. and. Uh, move toward toward a construction project and a safety enhancement. Uh, and then we've got a, just a list of miscellaneous bridges and box culverts. They're all box culverts effectively, but some of them are designated as bridges because they have a span greater than 10 feet. So those are, uh, hydraulics are completed for those. We just need to get some staff back in the office out of the field and get some design work done on those and we'll be uh, moving those into construction as time and budget permits. We've also been working on the daily park. Uh, bathhouse and the electrical uh, system at the campground area four. So the electrical upgrade was completed. Everything's got a 30 and a 50 amp service to the sites in area four. So that'll be a tremendous improvement. Anytime it got hot down there and we had a busy weekend, 
Uh, nobody's air conditioners worked. They were popping circuit breakers left and right because the, really the feed was insufficient for the system. Some of the wires were burning out into the ground because they were just drawing too much electricity through them. So we've upgraded it to uh, serve modern campers, and we'll continue with that in some of our other campground areas that are in need of it. So Pretty cool. The Area 3 bathhouse renovation project is nearing completion. Uh, they're working on... The, the plumbing in the floor today and then they'll be we'll be replacing the floor with concrete and we're looking at doing a, a finished concrete floor instead of the tile uh, so then we could do an epoxy finish on it later if we chose mm -hmm. to do so but you know the tile tends to um, soak up some of the odors and things mm -hmm. like that so mm -hmm. we're going to try uh, just a smooth nicely finished concrete floor nice. which is seen quite a bit in the industry. Would it be a seal then or something? Or? It would be sealed, yeah. There's always those that'll absorb everything. Absolutely. Too. Yep. They'd be putting a, a sealant on it and protecting it. But yep. Uh, the Rapidan Park, the fishing easement, land acquisition as you may recall, uh, we were uh, we needed to acquire some land from the Nelson family for river access. Uh, when we were working with the DNR on the fishing easement, we actually found out that the survey or the legal descriptions didn't quite tie together of what we thought we owned at Rapid and Dam Park and there was actually a, a sliver of land between our park and the river so we ended up uh, purchasing that that sliver of land around the perimeter so that we would have river access for the mm. entirety of the park mm. uh, that that process did require we went through probate for finalization of the land transfer so it's still uh, hanging there but it's the offer has been put out and accepted so the next step then would be to move towards uh, the fishing easement acquisition. We started that what three years ago. Oh yeah, at least yeah, at least because <coughs> this was something I had to pick up on that kind of yeah, that's got, right. Yeah, okay. a while. So fortunately, that, that Jack and Will knew what was going on. Were able to fill me in, so I appreciate yeah. that. Is is the DNR still committed to their share of that easement? Um, I got to follow up on that. Other than that, that's the updates that I have. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. No, pretty thorough. Pretty thorough. Yeah, very, guy, very, very thorough. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Man. Always appreciate it. All right, mm -hmm. have a good day. One, one question for you, yes. Lee. I've gotten a couple of calls in the last couple of weeks about the, the uh, road signs are faded uh, oh, yeah. in, from like several different areas. Have you had any? Anybody call you about are, that? Are they on Not, our roads or on Minnesota high, State Highway? Well, no, the street signs. The, oh, the street, yeah, yeah. Street signs. Yep, we actually, the product uh, failed. The it, it didn't meet the warranty period that it was supposed to have when mm -hmm. we purchased those signs oh, okay. way back when. Uh, so we actually got a, a percentage back on our purchase oh. from the vendor. We're in the process of buying all new 911 street signs for our oh, county roads oh. and our intersections well, Perfect. Uh, and putting those up, but that was spread over two years so that we could sure. budget for it. Sure. So, but, yeah, great. We were able to get the vendor to pay for part of it and then uh, at least for the material costs. So. Getting into the 21st century. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Absolutely. He says a long time ago, I was here when we did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but no. you were here a long time. Yeah. I remember being a citizen Thank kind you, of lobby. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Thank Thanks, you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Everybody all right? Move on yep. to the next item of business. So today we've got uh, a change order uh, for Ditch 9. We've got uh, Ryan Hineker here. To, uh, and if Craig wants to come up, he can come up too or just no. watch. Ryan, okay. Ryan. Uh, morning, Ryan. Ryan's show today. Specialist, Ryan. so thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for answering morning, my email Ryan. this morning, too. I appreciate yeah, that. No worries. No worries. So, yes, I'm Ryan Henniker, part of the drainage management team, Blue Earth County, um, to discuss a change order on our improvement project over by Eagle Lake, Madison Lake area, JD9. Mm -hmm. uh, the change order is just for a small lateral branch that was not originally included in the improvement. Um, it desperately needs it. There's no way of repairing it because the tile is actually coming out of the ground, so we can't do it as a repair. Um, so we're just doing it as a change order, and we're asking for a board approval for that. Um, I'll move approval. Second. second. We have a motion for approval and a second. Um, for change orders, we don't need to notify anybody then or anything as long as it's within a certain threshold. I don't know how they look at those change orders. You know, no, uh, yeah, as long as we're not 
exceeding our 30% of the total cost of the, we're not even well, one, one not even hundredth of that, yeah, no, I know. with the 12 mm -hmm. grand. And this, this was okayed by the landowner, the contractor, as you can see in the, um, the contractor. That is Ryan Yokel's signature. He obviously did it from his iPad or whatever, but uh, everybody was on board with the changes. So. And so when I looked at that form, it says, you know, it's a, a net increase from previous change orders of twenty seven thousand six seventy nine mm -hmm. is a is an amount, but then below that it says net potential increase of this change order twelve thousand five hundred forty. I'm just wondering yep. what that means. So it's going to be in addition to the total cost of what the original contract had started out at. There's two different petitions here. It's kind of a, mm -hmm. a wonky situation. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> But yes, it's just going to be an addition to the total cost. So the total cost difference will be twelve thousand, just the twelve five more at okay. this point. Yeah, so far. Yep, yep. There's always <coughs> unforeseen. Could be less. Could, Could be, be less. less. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it's just an addition of about five hundred and twelve feet, five fourteen, whatever it was. Um, but it's much needed. The farmer has zero yep. drainage mm -hmm. there now. Wow. So. It's actually the pieces are out of the ground. So, yeah. Now is the time to do it as the improvement. We can put four feet of cover on it and make it work with what they're doing currently. So, okay. Bill, Will, or nope. Kip, any comments? Or? Nope. Okay. Shelf explanatory. Okay. All right. Very good. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> no, we got you here, you know. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Ryan. We're saving it up. Yep. Saving up. Yeah. I also failed to mention when we started our meeting, we've got somebody new sitting with us today. He's not new to the county, but he out of our county attorney's office. We've got Mike Hansen here, and and uh, he's here in place of uh, Pat McDermott. Um, thanks for coming today, Mike. And you're welcome. And uh, Mike, I mean, I know Pat couldn't make it today, so. Thanks for filling in. Thanks for filling in. Well, you're welcome. Hey, good morning. Uh, not a whole lot of updates. I, if you look at the uh, report that was submitted, you can see that uh, case filings as projected for the year are real consistent with the last couple of years. Um, felonies may be down a little bit, but misdemeanors up uh, a good portion, and gross misdemeanors about the same. So uh, if you look at the numbers across, the also included with the city attorney, uh, cases that we handle and then the civil side with the chips and uh, the, the uh, um, child support those numbers are fairly consistent with the last few years as well so um, that's all I really had I don't know if anybody had any questions about well maybe you might board a couple of questions mm -hmm. yeah, I, I just comment that I appreciate the you know getting this data every yeah every yeah. month yeah. Yeah. and it's nice to see it and yeah a lot of stuff doesn't change but it's nice to see the different progressions and I know the staff has to take some extra time putting these reports together. I know you yeah. do a lot of it for the state, but it's nice seeing it at the county board level. What's uh, what's always shows to me that when I see the reports is how busy our law enforcement, how busy our county attorneys and city attorney's office really is. Yeah. Because uh, we have a lot going on. Yep. In Blue Ridge County, the city of Mankato, the greater Mankato area, we have a lot going on. and. Uh, we rejoice in the fact that we are a regional center and we have a lot of people, but with that, we also bring in a lot more crime, a lot more issues to the county. And uh, I really appreciate the job that you folks do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, and I suspect that the, the less felonies equates to the change in the law and some, some crimes also. Correct. For example, yeah. what used to be a, a fifth degree controlled substance yeah. crime, you know, possession of a little bit of methamphetamine would be a felony, is now a gross misdemeanor. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, you're correct, that probably accounts for the majority of yeah. the felonies yeah. going down by about 30, so. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you for all your good work. Thank you, Mike. I, I appreciate those kind of efforts. I just want to echo that, too, because yeah. Um, from articles I've been reading in magazines and, and uh, online, you know, and then also when we go to things with AMC and with NACO, it just seems like there's a real effort across the whole country to try to do uh, some sort of assessment of low, lower level crimes that maybe sometimes they fall into that felony category or they fall into the gross misdemeanor <coughs> category to try not to criminalize people who probably 
probably aren't criminals. I mean, by the by the definition of you know they break the law, but I mean to try not to criminalize them and try to see if there's some way we can uh, rehabilitate or help them. And I think those efforts are happening now. Yeah, I and agree. We've looked at some of those things, and and particularly with the drug cases, what you can do with first-time offenders to make sure that um, you're not setting them up for failure and you're not setting them up to not be able to get jobs in the future because of one conviction. So there are mechanisms we've been looking at with that. And if people know that, that cycle that happens, it's kind yeah. of, you've seen it if you're in law enforcement, <coughs> guess, who, guess who else gets to see a lot of it? Even human services. Oh, sure. You know, um, they, they can't find a place to live. Before you know it, they've lost their job. They can't find employment. And it's because of a one or two incidences that they've been um, found guilty of. And it's very hard to... Uh, get them back on track so then they fall they still fall in the county yeah a lot of them do if they come for assistance and so it does it you know it affects everybody it affects the whole community quite a bit so mm -hmm. it's nice to see that we've got at least the beginning here yeah. with the yellow line project and more work happening inside the jail even you know with, with our with our human um, our social services there yeah a lot of times the early uh, intervention with treatment can make a big difference and so i think that's a positive step yeah, I hope you sense that too. Do you sense that? Enough? Yeah, yeah, we so do. I mean, the, the numbers are still. I don't know if you saw the the Center for Rural Policy Development came out with uh, some research about how meth continues to be a big problem in outstate Minnesota. Yes. They're talking about the opioid crisis everywhere else, but yeah, we're still here. seeing an incredible amount of meth. And so, yeah. um, with those first time offenders, if we can get in there early and hopefully affect a change with them, it's a positive thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank yep. you, guys. Hey, yeah, thanks, thanks Mike. <coughs> so let's see here. We've got, uh, should we go ahead with a little break? Or yeah, right? let's do it. Yes, we could. We'll take a little break, come back in about seven or eight minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, welcome back. Just had a nice little break, and uh, we have to move on to our administrative services today. Bob? Oh, Mr. Help, Chair, help us with that. Sure, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, the first item is the County Board minutes for July 24th. I'll move the minutes. Second. We've got a motion for approval and a second. Any discussion or changes? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, go ahead, Bob. Next up are uh, the bills for the two weeks indicated. I'll move the bill. Second. Okay, we've got a motion for approval and a second. And uh, does anybody have any questions on some of the financial transactions that are listed? I haven't seen any. Did I need a question? Or I've got a couple. On? If you want me to, lay on here. Um, just a quick check. INS on the first week there contracted services for fifty thousand two hundred sixty-four dollars even. That was work that they did on 13 different uh, public drainage ditches. Wow. I think last time it was something like that, too. It's been busy out there. That's some big projects. And then uh, just a quick question here. I was wondering about this innovative office solutions. It's not very big transactions or anything, but in the parentheses on one of them, on the public health supplies end of it, because there's equipment for 24, office supplies for 331, and then there's public health supplies, and there's 80, 78 in parentheses. Does that mean that there was a credit that came back to us or something happened? Yes, yeah, so we did return an item, and so it is a credit on our account there. Oh, okay. okay. All right, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yeah, uh, we have a confidential vendor for uh, uh, advisory committee per diems for 290. I, I assume there's a reason for the confidential vendor on that. Yeah, I imagine it's a, um, a recipient in the human services department that, you know, gets other sorts of um, supports yep. from them okay. and, you know, it's yep. also part of an advisory committee. Yep. Okay. Um, anybody else got something? I, uh, I'm trying to think here. I had something with the free press. Uh, it's probably what public notices or something. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. You know, it says contracted services, and then another one says, you know, they're, these are all in parentheses, though, Bob. So one's 30, one's 34, 35, and one's 205, 33. And um, thank you to Free Press. 
and uh, we must have paid them for something and maybe then it gets returned or do I have my notes incorrect? I don't know. So uh, there's a credit for $134.35. Yeah. Um, this was a bill that ultimately um, had been paid by ISG as well, so probably related oh. to a ditch project. And we and we, we got a bill as well. So we so, double paid. Right. So oh, that I was see. cleaned up there. And then um, the same sort of situation in the elections uh, area where uh, we had a couple of paid twice situations. And so oh, okay. uh, just cleaning up those situations. One more in that first week, that standards and poor's global ratings, you know, that we use for for bond readings and things, I just want it cost sixteen thousand one hundred and fifty dollars even. And yeah. it, I mean, what what do they do for that? Um, they do the ratings <coughs> review, so um, that's part of that overall bonding cost. It was identified in the material that was presented at the last meeting as those fiscal charges. So that's what they get paid just to just to do a review of where we're at. Right. They. Um, they do a review of our situation. They do the call with uh, myself and the finance director, and then they issue the ratings. And that must be some kind of a standard fee, more or less, that they charge, because it just seems like a lot of money. <laughs> um, it is part of the overall bonding cost uh, yeah. process, and you know um, we needed to do it as part of the, the overall uh, process. Um, fortunately, we maintain that positive bond rating which helped us with the interest saved rate. us a lot i know right. so this is minimal in what it saves us in comparison to yeah, that savings i know that right. so i bet they must have quote unquote their own bonding and their own um risks and to get to where they're at so so that if they're stating that somebody is rated at a certain level it's trustworthy i would imagine that's correct that's probably why it costs so much i'm just mm -hmm. trying to you know in my own head wrap myself around something like that a fee mm -hmm. Right. For that, but anyway, um, Fell Harbor, Larson, Denlin, and Voigt, their labor employment law offices of the Twin Cities. And it's thirty thousand even. Which week, please? Week two. And. Uh, So that is a retainer fee that uh, we initiated for the condemnation proceedings on County Road 12. Oh. So we've engaged an attorney oh. to represent us in Boy. negotiations for yeah. some cool. of those properties. You think they'll use it all? Um, we hope to settle um, with a number of those um, individual parcels. Um, I think progress is being made, but Time yeah. will tell. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Um, the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development loan payment, 14500 even. That is a loan that was received um, to support Vine in the asbestos abatement in the Nichols building. Oh, long and they're, they're paying us back, but so in order to get through the, here? Yes. I or gotcha. pass through. Wow, we're still paying on that. Yep. Wow. Okay. Well, that's great. Couldn't stump you today. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of them too. <laughs> okay. Uh, any, anything else? I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. <coughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. This motion carries. Go ahead, Bob. Well, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number seven in your packet is the Human Resources Agenda. We do have one action item today, and that is the consideration of a reclassification of the Director of Information Technology from a D63 to a D71. Um, when we have positions that are vacated, we oftentimes review the job description and update those. Um, this is one of those cases where we've had um, a previous director of information technology in place for a long time and so um, staff did review the job description and submit it to Gallagher formerly Fox Lawson to do a review of the classification to ensure that uh, 
we continue to have that position ranked appropriately to maintain pay equity as required by state statute. And so um, Fox, Lawson, or Gallagher has come back with this recommendation to adjust the classification from the D63 to D71. And so recommending approval by the county board. I'll move to move. Second. All right, we've got a motion for approval and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> um, I, I actually think this is a pretty good idea. I mean, when, when they come back with a recommendation like that, it certainly makes sense. They've treated us pretty well and done a good job for us so far. But just on my own personal note, I know people in this business that are making even way more than what this new pay scale is going to give us. So I think in order to get a good quality person in this position, you know, we need to make this adjustment at this time and, and see what kind of pool of people we get. Yes. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, I would agree. And I want to thank Bob for responding to my inquiry too and sending that, that letter from the, the Gallagher group that kind of helps hi highlight mm -hmm. it a little bit. You know what I mean? It, it talked about it's moving it up one grade, right, Bob? That's correct. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Anything else? All those in favor, see the by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Under the informational items, then we have filled the clerical specialist uh, position in the uh, parts department, as well as a medium equipment operator in our public works department. Uh, we did have a license center specialist move from part time to full time, and so that's resulted in uh, the initiation of recruitment for a part time license center specialist. And then we had a resignation of a maintenance engineer, and so we've begun recruitment to refill that position. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions on those items? Sounds good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Item number eight in your packet then is a uh, resolution and letter of support uh, regarding a regional transportation coordinating council. Uh, this is a request coming from the Mankato Area uh, Planning Organization who is charged by MnDOT to um, look at pulling together this uh, Regional Transportation Coordinating Council. Um, the goal is really to try and see if there are um, strategies and uh, methods that could be uh, implemented that would bring the regional transportation systems together. Um, and so <clears throat> it would have representation of a lot of transit providers uh, in the, the nine county region. Um, I think it's uh, important for Blue Earth County to be at the table um, oh, yeah. to kind of see what comes from that. There is a little bit of concern in terms of what um, benefits we might receive, but uh, that's part of the planning process, I think. Um, in order to try and uh, determine those things. As I understand it, there will be two phases. The first phase will be more of a planning effort, probably a 12-month kind of technical review of the systems that are out there and discussions about opportunities. And then the, the second phase would be focused on implementing strategies that would uh, connect these different systems. Uh, it's all it's been discussed like at our maple mm -hmm. meetings, and that's, um, yeah, it's, I guess, the way it, the format for it to go. So, uh, we're a big stakeholder, so we should be part of it. <clears throat> so, I guess we can move that, huh? Would you like to move I'll that, move Mr. Commissioner? Move that to Second. Commissioner People moved, and uh, Mr. Brunner seconded it. Any more comments or? Discussion about this. I heard about it uh, last month. Uh, we had our um, transportation advisory committee, or transit, excuse me, transit mm -hmm. advisory committee with uh, True Transit over at Vine, mm -hmm. and um, Charles Androwski provided a letter of explanation, which was very kind of him, um, <clears throat> so we could understand what how this will impact what they do over there and their planning, you know, and and. Um, There'll be many, as you mentioned, many stakeholders uh, from the region involved with this, 
of various, uh, um, I guess, types of services and, and organizations, uh, including medical. And, and so, um, Charles Androwski, he's you work with him, Mark, I know. Yeah, he's, he's the director the, of yep. Maple. Very, well, he's, yeah, the, what do you the call staff it? person for Yeah, Maple. staff person. Yep. And um, I think the good thing about it is, is that let's just say that we're trying to work with one of the counties to bring somebody, try to figure out some inter-county transportation for, for people, for transit. These folks then can identify the reasons for doing that and the stakeholders and maybe make some recommendations as to how to go about doing that. I mean, I hope that's kind of what the, the goal is, to help save money and redundancy. Yep. And, and then I know it costs money up front. And they decided to use the same counties as the Region 9 Development Commission is in. And so an example might be our transit services down in Faribault County and Blue Earth County would have some cooperative agreement with each other, with MnDOT, possibly, so that people from you know, Winnebago could could get dropped off here or vice versa and get picked up mm -hmm. to come to Mankato. And uh, and so those are the kind of things we've been hoping could, uh, could occur. And I think they might help facilitate some of those, you know, facilitate some of those communications. I hope. Mm -hmm. Hope this is, that's kind of the goal, I think. Best practices and things like that. Yeah, that's so, basically what it is. Yeah. See how it, it, and that's what MnDOT's pushing. So. See how it works. Yeah. And it's new to us because we haven't had a lot of county transit. You know, a lot of this stuff is kind of new. So, anybody else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're going on to our. Uh, is there, oh, Bob, is there anything else? That's all I had for you today, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Commissioner's reports. Who's just chomping on the bit that wants to get started here? Anybody? <laughs> I can certainly start. Okay, good. thank you. After our last board meeting, we had our work session, which we had several items to discuss, but actually had a little more time for budget stuff, which was always nice yeah. to do, because the budget <clears throat> seems to be put at the bottom of the agenda and doesn't get a lot of time. So. Yeah. Uh, then after that, I had my EMS meeting, which we had some good, good discussion. Um, the person from the ambulance board was down and talked to us a little bit about some stuff going on and we got a new going on some new leadership up there so he was at our meeting and he's the new person that's kind of going to be in charge of the organization and as far as i can tell i think he's permanent but i but i didn't get that detail but we just talked about our relationship with the emsrb and the ems board and some things that he wanted to see us uh provide him for information because there's someone new there. I don't think there's anything alarming. There's just the fact there's somebody new there. They just want some different information. We also talked at great lengths about uh, some community support from the nine counties and we did direct the uh, Mark, the director, to send a letter to all the counties asking requesting for $5,000. It is, you know, preferably hopefully only one time deal, but we all know that when stuff like that starts, sometimes it doesn't stop. Uh, we are we are just having a huge problem with the seat belt money not being as much as it used to be, which is a good thing because people are using their seat belts and not handing out violations for seat belts. But at the end of the day, it does that that is part of our funding for EMS. So, um, but we're we're still doing we're still doing really well, uh, but we have burned up pretty much all the savings and all the money they had uh, to to run the operation. So we just need to start finding some other revenue. Uh, sources and so that's going to be one request that we'll be bringing forward i made it to charlie's retirement party which oh, i got yeah. to the end of it i got i missed the presentations because the ems meeting <laughs> ran long and so that's why i didn't get there till later but i did get yeah, here yeah. for a few minutes to say hi to charlie and tell him thank you for all of his hard work and appreciate his dedication to the county and then we had our department head meeting uh, Wednesday night I had planning and zoning we only had one item on the agenda which we'll see at the next board meeting uh, just a, a plat review. I uh, sat in on the All Seasons Arena meeting for Vance the other day because he was out of town, and they got they got a lot of things going on there. They mm -hmm. talked about some different things they got going on. The, there was Thank a couple. You for there doing was, that. Yeah, there was a group there that came in and visited about trying to get more ice time. So I got to hear more about ice time, ice time, ice time. But it sounds like it's a 
big issue, and again, I don't know nearly enough about it. How's the parking? Do you see anything about parking? Um, yeah, the, the parking, you know, if you, it's, the parking is an issue, I guess. Yeah. I, I would imagine a lot of people can get in that building, so. Oh, man. Uh, but it seems like they're doing, they're doing pretty well up there. And then we had our MRCI meeting yesterday, but I was unfortunately too busy. I couldn't get away to get to it, but I did call Brian. He said, uh, everything's going really well. Things are on track. Uh, we sold the candy business. You know, we've been getting the payments uh, for the contract for deed, and so we're actually showing a profit on the candy business. Oh, wow. And we're not in the candy business anymore, but we are still utilizing the support staff and some of our clients to do the work. So the operations really didn't change a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. Whether or not he's making money at the end of the day, yeah, I don't know, but at this point, we're getting our payments. So, But things are going pretty well there. And then several parades and community events that we made it to over the last few weeks to show our support for the small communities. That's my report, Mr. Chair. Very nice. Thank you. Um, Mark, would you like to go ahead? Yep, not too long. Um, yeah, July 25th at the work session, and like Kip said, it was a worthwhile one with uh, yeah, more time devoted to budget issues, which was which we needed. Uh, July 26th, the next morning, I did go to the East Side YMCA Community Forum, and um, yeah, they actually had brought up a uh, couple parcels of land around that uh, people are willing to give and or, or uh, I think basically donate. I don't know the way it sounded, so we'll see. Uh, but they got to go through a process, and that's what they what had a person from the YMCA that was uh, national that was there to help facilitate. It. Really? Yeah. So they're looking for another location, right? Yeah, for the east side. Right. You know, they've been talking about it for a number of years. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now, and they have a long process to get there, it isn't just so. But it was interesting that they, uh, John brought up, John kind of brought yeah. up the, I actually named the people, individuals of the property, and I don't know. Well, yeah, so that's a I'm trying to find somebody like that for partners for affordable housing. That's, uh, <laughs> so if you know anybody. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> Um, then yeah, Charlie Berg's retirement. He's actually a neighbor, a few houses down the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, he says he'll have more time at home, doing home, uh, doing stuff around the house. Now that he's re gain, gain, fully retired. Wow. Um, then uh, yeah, on August first we had department heads meeting, and then it, on August second the next uh, we had Denver Maple meeting, and that's we did have the, about the tip enhancement projects and then the trans transit plan that we're coming up with. And of course, this uh, other item was discussed a little mm -hmm. that we had. So um, I was moving along there. Yes, Charles has been there for a few months, and he's very, uh, very detail oriented, and he does a good job. And uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Well, thank you uh, very much. Yeah, that, it does. That's uh, tonight is our night to night for Skyline. It's first ever, so national night out. Yeah. yeah, for the national one. Yeah, yeah. since we yeah. Um, the, the night to night one in Mankato is the twenty eighth. That's yep. yeah. <laughs> we did. They did it so I could go to those ones on the twenty eighth. Is that right? Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm on the committee. <laughs> yep. I know. I saw some of those flyers you guys are putting out. Okay. Well, thank you, and uh, yeah. Yeah, Commissioner Purvis. Yep. Okay, of course, the 25th, the work session was talked about, and it was also at Charlie's retirement. <clears throat> and then the fair was the 26th through the 29th. Uh, I tried to be down there as much as I could. Uh, uh, on the 28th, I uh, presented the Farm Family of the Year Award at the fair, which was uh, the Dean and Tammy Sonneban family from Sresco Township, so I was pleased to do that. On uh, the 1st of August, I uh, attended a meeting with uh, Rapidan Township, uh, some uh, emergency management people from the state uh, area, state and federal legislators, and uh, all kinds of other people to talk about the, uh, the road that uh, uh, Rapidan had to uh, reconstruct after the 2010 flood. FEMA had initially approved a $360,000 grant for them to do that, and once the work was done, then they denied it. So, so uh, Rapidan Township has an annual budget of about $250,000, and so now they're trying to scramble to uh, figure out what to do with this, wow. what to do with this deficit <coughs> they have. Uh, Representative Munson was there and agreed to um, 
carry a bill to the legislature uh, appropriating money to help them. So uh, if you get to uh, see any of our legislators, let them know that we would strongly approve of that action. So we'll see where it leads. Uh, <clears throat> after that, I got in on just the tail end of the department head meeting. Uh, and then after that, I had a um, landowners meeting over in Lake Crystal for County District 56. Uh, some additional work needs to be done on that. Uh, then we had a, uh, after that, I had a, another landowners meeting for County Ditch 28. Uh, we have another for petition for repair uh, on that. Uh, quite a uh, controversial <laughs> petition, to say the least. So we're trying to work through that. And then uh, yesterday I uh, uh, was part of the interview board for the uh, uh, 4-H coordinator for Blue Earth County interviews. We interviewed three three candidates, um, all three very qualified, and we uh, uh, sent our uh, recommendations on to the uh, university who, after they're done interviewing everybody, I mean for all the county um, People, then they will make a decision. But we had, had three very good candidates. Any one of them would do a good job. So pleased with that. And after that, I uh, did my monthly briefing at Crystal Seasons. It's so, my report. Nice. And you go there every month. To yep. See. That's yep. Pretty nice. Yeah. They are. They're. I'm. I'm always well received, and they are very well versed on what. Just try giving oh. them some false information sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. I think most seniors vote and they follow a lot of the, a lot of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of sad. One of my buddies, Arnie, passed away from oh. the last time I was there. So oh, sure. I miss him. Yeah, yeah. Neat guy. I can relate to that. Yeah. Thank you very much, yep. Mr. Stromberg. Well, uh, I had most of my two weeks have to do with a family vacation and then a family funeral. Um, so, and I want to thank all of you for the amazing flowers that uh, you sent uh, for my sister's funeral. That was uh, very, very nice. Yeah, our very. I was uh, got got me right right here when I walked in the door and I saw those. So thank you very much. Uh, yesterday I drove to St. Cloud for a magic meeting. Uh, most of the meeting had to do uh, with. Um, talking about a discussion uh, on the sponsorship for AMC, what AMC does for Magic, and and uh, we pretty much got everything worked out to with the same type. But I think they changed a few words here and there, um, and uh, but it, we worked it out well, uh, so it works with uh, works well with AMC, and so that AMC can continue trying to uh, bring support in. Uh, the more counties that, that can get into MAGIC, the better it's going to be for all of us, uh, you know, so because the more money they have to work with, uh, the better deals that they can get to, uh, to help with our money that we're, uh, we're, we're putting in there. So, um, but that was it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Our condolences again yeah. for the loss of your sister and to her family. Tough time, I know. Well, thank you for your report. Um, I'll give a quick one here. Uh, of course, we had our meeting on the 24th, and on the 25th, we had our, our I had a blind board meeting early in the morning, 7:30, and then made it in time for our work session, county work session. And of course, we had some good uh, discussion about our 2019 budget, and Bob helped lead a lot of that. And, uh, I think we had an update on the. Uh, progress report from our government center project with the parking ramp and all that work that's going on. We know it's been delayed a little bit because of some of those rains. Um, and then on the 26th, I was honored to, uh, as the board chair, to represent our board and, and the administration along with, uh, with Bob to say a few words for departing uh, uh, retiring Charlie Berg from our IT directorship. I think. Uh, he worked for the county 34 years, if I remember correctly. That's a long time. You know, we've got a lot of expertise that's leaving our county this year with these retirements that are happening, so it's very interesting. But uh, thank you again, uh, Charlie, for your service. 
And then on the 27th, of course, I went to the, I was at the fair, mm -hmm. had a nice time checking out things there. I got to have Mark was calling numbers at the bingo booth. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> that was my report. Yeah, right. And uh, 29th on Sunday, I did do a, something in your district there, and they invited me again. I couldn't believe they invited me back, but yeah. <laughs> Zion uh, Lutheran oh, Church. Oh, like Yeah. yeah. So my wife, my wife played the violin, and, and I sang. We did like a duet kind of a thing, and uh, that's not quite like Sonny and Sharon. Not quite, no. <laughs> but uh, it was nice. It's a wonderful community there at Zion, and just wanted to mention that. And they also had me preach, so I thought that was nice. And they needed somebody to fill the pulpit that Sunday morning, and then we had our neighborhood meeting with the city. We're still doing some park planning and in my district here over in Lincoln Park and, and uh, moving forward you're going to see some changes down there pretty soon Stoltzman Road which is a county road mm -hmm. it's right on the county road there so you'll see some changes happening good ones and then uh, of course on the 31st Tuesday some of us attended the uh, commissioner forum mm -hmm. you know I think Kip you were there and mm -hmm. Bob and <coughs> some other folks and to listen to our three commissioners for District 1 that are vying for this seat. Uh, District uh, 1 has three uh, uh, women who are, they seem very, after listening to that, all three of them seem very well qualified. And uh, for sure, sometime the first week of January, you're going to have a, a woman uh, mm -hmm. commissioner sitting in this seat with you guys. So it was a very nice thing to attend. Uh, we've got See, is it uh, Tammy Hansen, Katie Boone, and Colleen Landcammer who are vying, vying for this seat? And that uh, primary is next week, mm -hmm. 14. Uh, we've got a department head meeting on August 1st I attended. We've got some good updates. August 2nd, I attended the South Central MnDOT <coughs> TZD steering committee. Some changes going on there too, because you know, staff go off and retire and different things happen. So uh, it's, it's going through some changes. Hey, Tom. Let's see, we've got a former commissioner just walked in. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Laughlin. And then uh, at that meeting, we reviewed our serious and fatal auto crashes, which are never a fun thing to do. But we tried to look for anything that was out of the ordinary or something that we need to change. Um, it's sad when you hear about accidents that occur, and sometimes people don't wear their seatbelts. And they would have survived, obviously, according to most reports that they had had their seatbelt on. So I just want to mention to wear your seatbelt. And then uh, on August 6th, um, we had a good meeting, Bob and I did yesterday, just with some ideas and review for the county. And also I met with a, a woman that works in our community, and she also is a local artist, uh, Julie uh, Johnson, and talked about something we're working on this Saturday, uh, anybody would like to attend at the Riverfront Park at 10 o'clock in the morning. No, excuse me. Yeah, it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're calling people that would like to be a part of the Spirit of Water celebration. And so it's all going to be about water. And we're going to have uh, a year from September. I'm not sure the exact date. It may be the second Sunday. Of September 2019 and with the help of uh, a lot of area stakeholders including the city of Mankato we're hoping to have the first spirit of water celebration and everything will be celebrating water from food to beverages to poetry art different forms of art uh, both painted art you know um, hopefully even sculpture and then information booths, educational booths, and then uh, musicians, that all of the songs will be inspired by water. And so uh, we'll be trying to get some brainstorming on Saturday morning, if you know of anybody that would like to be a part of that. It'll be a regional, large regional um, uh, effort. So, and that's, that ends my report. So. Well, what do we have to do, Bob? Anything else here on our agenda today? That's it for today. Well, other than welcoming our esteemed former commissioner, Tom McLaughlin. Thanks for coming in. <laughs>
We'll be going to lunch, taking our recess, and going to the Loose Moose uh, for uh, a luncheon meeting. And so, do we have to move that, or do we have to? I'll move to recess. Second. Second. Okay, we've got a motion for recess and a second. And so we'll recess to the Loose Moose Saloon. <laughs>